because a monument can only say one thing. For example, we honor, or we remember, or we endured, or we won, or simply we grieve. It is this concentrated singleness of expression that makes something monumental. The instant it tries to say many things, it is no longer a monument, but a Russian novel. <laughs> the, the handful of American monuments that have achieved iconic status that we can instantly call to mind are those that convey their meaning in one single urgent gesture, stripped of all anecdote or distraction or sideshow. The splendid formal clarity of Jefferson's domed memorial, the tragic fortitude of Lincoln's four-square citadel, the spectacular authority of Washington's obelisk, the meaning of each of these is summed up abstractly but lucidly by their shape, outlined against the sky, carrying through to the most distant view. And each of these makes a confident statement, as it should. In stone, one builds exclamation points, not question marks. And Dwight David Eisenhower surely deserves an exclamation point. Remember, D-Day was the single most daring military operation of World War II, perhaps of all time. Eisenhower's successful transportation of about 150,000 men, that's the nine divisions that comprises an entire army, across a body of water in a single day and against furious opposition. This is the stuff of legend. If this is not greatness, then nothing is. And yet, Frank Gehry's design shows a distinct uneasiness with the greatness of its subject. The truth is, martial greatness is not much in fashion these days. And perhaps this is why Gehry nimbly sidestepped it by making the focus of his design the young Eisenhower, whose great achievements were in the future, mere hypothetical possibilities and not tangible historical fact. But this is hardly the first monument to offer a barrage of visual imagery as a way for compensating for the lack of any grand heroic gesture. Now the great memorials of the past were effective in large part because their reliance on allegory, the symbolic language that presents complex subjects to be rendered through abstract shapes and symbols. But over the past generation, we've exchanged the imaginative compression of allegory for a painful literalism. Instead of being asked to imagine, we are presented with literal facts. For example, the Roosevelt Memorial, we see each presidential term represented in a theatrical tableau. One shows a man listening intently to one of Roosevelt's fireside chats. Another shows a queue of men lined up at a soup kitchen. These are scale models, more appropriate to Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, with their fussy catalog of props and radios and chairs and costumes. They are hostile to the allegorical impulse, which seeks not to itemize, but to generalize. Not to speak specific truths, but to speak great truths. <laughs> 